Okay guys, I think that's enough time for people to join. Let's get started here. So, welcome and thank you for attending for Armour Academy Basics Training. Uh, today I'm just going to be talking about just the basics of armour. Uh, we talk about nanites, pulling armour, just to get you all comfortable in armour in general and how to pull it. So, the first thing I want to talk about is nanites. Nanites is what the game uses as the currency to pull vehicles. Um, to find where your nanites are, like your currency, uh, you can find it by looking at the bottom left. Underneath your minimap, it should be like a blue circle, and next to that circle you'll have a number. Mine right now is 750. 750 is the max amount of nanites you can have. And if you're having trouble just finding where nanites are just by that, um, if you hold the tab key, it should bring up a menu. And then you have a battle scoreboard, status report, and facility modules. Under status report, you have your battle rank, search points, IS4, and nanites. Uh, and that's where you can find your nanites, you know, a, a different way. And um, you should see a timer next to your nanites, say next deposit. I've got ammo for you here. That tells you when your next deposit of nanites should be. Um, it's a minute every time uh, you get a, a deposit of nanites. Um, the only difference is um, if you're a member or not. So if you're a member, you get 75 nanites per minute. If you're not, you get 50. Um, so is there any questions on nanites? Now, I know nanites can be confusing in terms of, oh, why are my nanites running out? So is there any questions on nanites? And if you do have any questions, you know, if can't speak, just pop them in the chat, the platoon chat. So nanites, that's your currency and how you pull armor. So each armor piece costs nanites to pull. I'll be showing you where and how much each vehicle costs soon. But is there any questions generally on nanites? How do you, how do you get, get more? Put discounts. Discounts? Uh, discounts are a uh, outfit, um, outfit resource. It used to be in an outfit, and then you have to have permissions with that outfit to get discounts. So discounts, um, as the word is, discount. They discount how much nanites you pay. Um, for a vehicle, and then snack. Did you say how? How do you get more nanites? Oh, just over time. Every minute, you should get a deposit of fifty or seventy-five, depending if you're a member or not. Like I said, on the tab, um, on the tab section, you can see your next deposit, and then it should be a countdown. Any other questions on that? No questions. Okay. So, the next pit. If you want to follow me, Gold Star, we're going to go over to this uh, one of two um, armor terminals, or vehicle terminals. Now, before we all click on it, um, it says E, I know you want to press E, I just want to all, I just want you all to just take a look at it. You know, the, notice the color and notice the image on the actual terminal itself. Now, the color represents what faction owns the terminal so for us obviously it's purple so the value owns this so if you're running around and you see a terminal it's a different color it could be in this case red or blue that means the other faction controls that terminal another thing is to notice is the image on the actual terminal it is our main battle tank or, or as for sure MBT and this is your main battle tank terminal now the distance between this terminal and the other vehicle terminal is that the other vehicle terminal is a sunderer or that bus looking thing and the difference between the two is um, the difference between the two is this terminal you can pull your main battle tank your big tank whilst the other terminal you can't that's the only difference you can pull every other vehicle except your main battle tank that's the difference between the two terminals so uh, if you just want to press E on the uh, on the terminal itself and it should pop up with your menu. Now in here, you'll see all the vehicles you can pull from this terminal. Like I said, this is the main battle tank terminal, so you can see your main battle tank in this terminal. Um, so if depending on, if you're at NSO, NSO is that uh, robot faction that you might see running around. Um, you might see some additional different vehicles, so just keep that in mind. I'm just going to go over 
uh, the vanished Berserker terminal, uh, vehicles, I will be mentioning the Javelin, which if you're an NSO you'll see, and the Chimera bit. So the first thing you should see is the Flash. Now what is the Flash? The Flash is a two-man transport vehicle, that's what it does. It gets you from A to B really quickly. It's It has zero armor, you know, it can take uh, light, light, uh, light arms fire, so that means, you know, you're just your bare rifle can do damage to it, and you can get shot off from this. So just be careful when pulling this. Um, it carry, it, you know, it's a driver and a passenger, so only two people can you know be on this at one time. Uh, you can equip you can equip uh, a weapon on this. You can equip like anti tank, anti infantry uh, weapons, but it's a very niche vehicle. I wouldn't recommend you know if you saw some armor to pull a flash against it, unless you know you know your way around the flash. So that's the flash, it's just, you know, it gets you to the next base, to the next hex, to the next, just very quickly. And it is the cheapest out of all the vehicles, so you know, if you're, if you're out in nanites, you need to get to the next base, and you don't want to redeploy, flashes, you know, your choice. The next one is uh, the harasser. Now, the harasser, oh, just, sorry, to go back on the flash, the javelin is basically the same thing as the flash, just that the dav javelin floats. It's basically the same thing. Uh, so that's for the NSO faction, if you're not aware, just to avoid confusion, if you're not seeing it. The javelin is basically a flash, it just let it floats. Now moving on to the harasser. So the harasser is, I would say it's a light attack vehicle, that's what I'd say. It is armor, so if someone says pull armor, I think it's viable, but, you know, I would more of a scouting vehicle, I would say. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this is a light attack vehicle. It can hold up to three people. It's a driver, a gunner, and then a passenger in the back, or we call it a rumble seat. Um, this vehicle is, again, it's uh, vulnerable to um, light arms fire, so your rifle can damage this, so if you see it on the road, you know, you'd be surprised if like two or three people are shooting at this, how fast it will die. So just keep that in mind. Um, it can hold, you know, it can have anti-infantry and anti-tank capabilities, you know, depending on what, obviously what gun you put on it. But the whole point of this is to, as the name says, harass. It, you need to, you know, uh, draw focus from your main battle tanks, distract the enemy, keep your distance going fast, and then come out fast, do your damage, and then come out fast. That's what the harass is for. It's, you know, fast, you know, quick damage, and then out. Just distracting the uh, enemies from your main force of vehicles. Now the next vehicle is the Sundra. Uh, again, if you do have any questions, I'm just going over the section, so just put them in the platoon chat and I'll get some after I finish this section. Um, so the Sundra. This is this is a very important vehicle when it comes to um, to armors and capping base. This is that bus thing you might see when you're dead and you might redeploy, you might see that green bus that you can spawn on. This is what this is. It's your mobile spawn unit. And spawn, uh, you know, you can make this a spawn point for your team. Now this can hold up to 12 people have a driver and two gunners. Um, it can be outfitted with different types of modules, like you can have it a cloak Sunday, so you know it goes invisible. You can have it a shield Sunday, so it has more of a it's more beefy, it's more takes more you know, it can absorb a lot more damage. And then you can also put um what we call gate uh, shield diffuser, so GSD, and that allows you to go through any bases, any shields or blue shields or the red shields that you might be able to get through with regular vehicle. So, and then it can equip, you know, different types of guns as well. So, depending on the situation you're driving into, um, equip, you know, anti-air, anti-finch vehicle. So, that's what the Sundra is, you know. I've, I, I would say an a, a infantry transport, a, a mobile spawn unit. It's very useful when um, mapping bases and stuff. So, that's your, uh, that's your Sunday. It's the big bus thing. Now, moving on to the Lightning. Now, this is where... The tanks come in. This is your basic tank. Every faction can pull this. It's more of your, I would say, your light tank. It's not your main battle tank. It's, it's your light tank. It is a tank. It is a one-man tank. Uh, again, this can be equipped with a variety of different cannons. So again, this can be equipped with anti-infantry, anti-tank, anti-air. Um, it's very useful. It's fast. It's got that low profile. So using the terrain is very useful. Um, it does have a smaller health pool than your main battle tank, so if you do see like the enemy's main battle tank, so like your Vanguard or your Prowler, 
and I wouldn't recommend pulling this, but you can if you feel more comfortable in it. Um, just know that your health pool is smaller, so the chances of winning is lower. But it's good for if you're just solo, you don't have a gunner, it's great, you drive and you shoot at the same time, so really good. Light tank. Uh, your next one, this is this is our this is our I would say your bread and butter. This is your this is your front armor, this is your big boy your main battle tank, the Magarider. This is our Vanu technology, our hover tank. Um this is again this is this is our main battle tank. It holds a driver and a gunner. So the driver has the main cannon and then you've got a support gunner on top. Um, again you can help this outfit this out with anti infantry, anti tank. And then you can have your support gunner with a bit of anti air. Um, a key point on this, because it's a hover tank, I know you guys noticed the new map OSHA. Um, it does float on water at full speed. So keep that in mind. If you know if you're tired of driving your your Sundra very slow across the water, you know, you want to get this somewhere fast across the water, then you've got the Magrider. And then it's the same thing with the Javelin. The Javelin's a hover hover cycle, hover bike. So that will go across the water too. That's just as fast as the Magrata. So keep that in mind when playing OSHA that this does float on water and it goes a lot faster than the other tanks. So that's your main battle tank. And the next vehicle, I don't want to go too much into it. Oh, and again, if you're NSO, uh, you'll see a different tank here. You'll see the Chimera. That's the NSO's main battle tank. I won't go too much over that. But um, Yant is the next vehicle we're going to talk about. I won't talk about too much because that's more of a construction. A vehicle, it's as it is, it's the anti it, it makes bases. This is what you need to make a base. You can equip a gun on it, but that's about it. On that, it's again, I wouldn't pull this for armor, any reason for armor. So that's just if you're into building a base, that's what you'd pull. So, any questions on that? Yeah, so a question in the chat vehicle terminals, you can see them on the map. You do have to be in the hex, I believe. You see it so like, for example, if you open your map now, you can't see if Two Stone has a vehicle terminal. So to see, um, not every map has a vehicle terminal, unfortunately, especially here on SMA, it's kind of weird. So if you're at a base and you're confused where the vehicle terminal is, the best thing is to open your map, zoom in, and you can see it. Right now, if you zoom in on your mini map, you can see the vehicle terminal on the opposite side of us. It's like a little tank symbol. Um, and if it's the tank symbol, that means it's the main battle tank. If it's the um, the Sundra, the bus looking thing, that would be your support vehicle. Yeah, that's my biggest problem is like, I'm, I am I like to go build bases and stuff and I can never find a vehicle terminal, so I always just go back to the warp gate and pull an ant. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, your best thing is if you're not too sure, if you're not familiar with that base, spawn in that base, look at the map, and you should be able to find it from the map. And again, it should, if you look at Platoon Red, it's hard to see because there's loads of people here. But if you look at Platoon Red, I'll try not to cover it like you see over by there. You see how it's a little tank symbol? I think I'm covering it. I think I'm... Yeah. You're good. Yeah, it's over there. You can see it. And that's how you'd find it. So if you spawn at the base, open your map, you should be able to find it like that. Any questions? Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, no worries. Any questions on the vehicles or... Um, just the terminals in general. Are the uh, Flash and the Ant the only vehicles capable of cloaking while moving? Uh, unfortunately, the Ant did get removed the cloak just recently. So okay. the Ant can't cloak anymore. Oh, wow. Yeah, so now the, uh, the Ant, I believe, only has a boost ability. It's got a shield as well. Yep, so that yeah, yeah, so the Flash is the only one that can cloak now. Got it. Good to know. Yeah, so the Flash can cloak. It does have a, um, it's called the Wraith Cloak. It's really useful, especially if you want to go against the other vehicles. Get up behind them, sneaky. You have to be an infiltrator to use it though, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good thing to know, is if you do want to use the cloak on the Flash, you do have to be infiltrator. Any other questions on the vehicles or the terminal? There's a no. Okay. I'm going to invite you all to press your U keys. So to press your U keys, should be a countdown that says redeploy. Just wait the 10 seconds. 
and uh, you'll see them at screen and we'll move on from there. So once you're in your map screen, everyone should be in their map screen now, Whoever's, everyone's redeployed. You can see the map. <laughs> Funny enough, you can see the map. Um, I just want you all to pay attention at Platoon Way, at the warp gate, at where we just redeployed from. Uh, just go ahead and highlight the green circle, but don't spawn in for me. I just want you to highlight that green spawn circle. And uh, once you've highlighted that, you should see the big deploy now button. Deploy button on the bottom left of your screen. Now, above that, it should be the spawn as. This is where you can select uh, what class you want to spawn as. And because we're doing armor now, we recommend do whatever you like. I'm going to pick engineer. The engineer is the, the uh, wrench looking uh, symbol. Now, just across from that wrench looking symbol is your heavy, which is that little those three bullets, and then across over that it should be a circle. It should be a circle with like a line through it, it's like a no circle. And if you click on that circle, on that weird no circle, where it says spawn as and then it's a weird circle, um, it should come up with all the options you can spawn from this base. So if you click a base and it has that green circle, and then you click your no circle, you should it should give you all the options uh, for what vehicles you can directly spawn from the map. So here you can see, don't get confused, there is some air vehicles because we're at the warp gate. So, and we're just going to be focusing on armor. So here you can select what vehicle you want, like the Flash, the Sundra, the Lightning, your Mag Rider, and so on. So if you just click like the Flash and then press deploy, it will deploy you into a vehicle. But before we do that, I just want to mention, um, you can't do this at every base. Um, recently they've messed up some of the... Um, if you can pull and can't pull, depending if it's contested. So if you just look at, um, let's see a base that's contested. We don't have a base that's contested right now, unfortunately. So if, if a base that looks contested is like Pale Canyon, if that was, um, oh, put in if that was purple, and you'd see the uh, the timer running out or running, that means it's contested. Um, so usually, um, if it's contested, you can't pull directly from the map. They have changed the thing, so I'm, it's, I've been able to recently. I, I think they've changed it, so... They didn't I'm, change it where you can't. Yeah, they did change it. Oh, well, you can't. Can. What was that, Snap? You can't? You can. You can. Yeah. Okay, so... Okay, so you can. Even if it's contested, just 100% sure you can pull. So even if it's contested, even if it's that timer, you can pull from the map. And so may not change. stay around, it is subject to change. Yeah, just keep that in mind. I don't want to tell you guys that it's, you know, it's guaranteed that's going to happen because, you know, they've changed some stuff recently. So, the reason to pull from the map is it's a lot faster, you know. You know, so having to spawn in, then run to the terminal to actually find it. So the, per the person had the problem to finding a terminal. If you just click on the green circle, the base that you want to spawn at, and then click the spawn as circle and select the ant or whatever vehicle you want, and then press spawn once it's highlighted, it should put you straight into a... That is so helpful, like, oh my god. <laughs> yes, I yeah. was gonna say, Grouch, this is just for you. <laughs> yeah, this is just for you, so yeah. That helps so you a lot, that tells you the time. If, if it's there, but you can't, it won't let you pull. So, um, yeah, so when it comes to our base, uh, they've just, uh, sometimes um, it tells you that terminal hacked or destroyed. So if a terminal is destroyed, um, that means you can't pull directly from that base. You're going to have to spawn in as an engineer and repair it. Uh, they just recently changed the hacking, so you might sometimes spawn in at our, friend, at our base that we own, see the terminal as a sniper. It means an enemy infiltrator sniper has come in and hacked it. So don't get d discouraged if you see like a red or a blue terminal at our base. Just grab an infiltrator or the sniper class and go ahead and hack it back spawning your vehicle again. So if you do see I that green circle... I recommend just destroying the terminal and fixing it because there's a bug with hacking it back where it will deny anyone from pulling from the map following that. It there you go. So yeah. You can pull, but it won't let you. So you have so, yeah. to destroy it. This one. Um, so yeah, that's, you know... Um, like I said, the, the main the main one right now is uh, if it's destroyed. So if it's destroyed, just go in and repair it. And then you should be able to pull from the map. So if you all just look back at Platoon Way uh, and then highlight a vehicle you want to pull straightly from the map, I'm just going to pull a flash. You know, pick whatever you want, it's fine. 
and then press deploy. Once you've highlighted that vehicle, it should put you directly to the map. Now, if you're having trouble doing that, please let me know. So, to redo that, so once you've redeployed, once you're dead, you have to be dead, like redeployed. Uh, you highlight that green circle, and then you should have the spawn as section, and next to that there should be a circle, like a circle with a line through it. If you click that circle with a line through, it should come up with all these options of these vehicles you can spawn in. You click a vehicle you want to spawn in, once it's highlighted in that little box, press deploy, and it should pull you straight into that vehicle, straight from the spawn screen. Yeah, so that's that's your fast way of deploying straight from the map. So I'm just going to give everyone a chance just to do that real quick. Make sure we've got everyone. Yeah, I think that's everyone, I think. So did everyone manage to do that? Anyone having trouble with that? Okay. Right. So if everyone wants to just move to platoon way or over by gold tower by me, you should see a um, a little tower over here. Oh Jesus! Oh no! That was uh kind of rude. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone wants to come over at platoon way, big yellow stars over here by this tower. Make sure everyone's over here. Okay, so what is this tower? So you're having fun, you're shooting away, you know, killing all the bad guys, getting all these certs, being super cool, but you run out of ammo. What do you do? Well, at every base you should find one of these towers. This is an ammo tower. This is what gives your vehicle ammo. So to get ammo from this tower, all you have to do is pull up next to it within the range. It should supply your vehicle with ammo over time. So I think every couple of seconds, it should give you a deposit of ammo. Just pack up next to it, and it gives you ammo. Any questions on that? Any questions on the ammo tower? Uh, do you mind if I add something? Yeah, sure. So just a friendly reminder that you can only pull ammo from your friendly bases. So as long as the base is purple or controlled by Vanu itself, you can only pull ammo from there. You can't pull ammo from a um, enemy base. Don't know why. I'm gonna write a letter, but yes, that's something that to to remind yourself of. Yeah, keep aware of where you're at on the map. Make sure you go to a friendly base. Retreat back. Gives you a chance to uh, do a little retreat. Look at the map where you're at. So yeah, like uh, Chris said, it has to be a friendly base. Unfortunately, you can't just go to any tower and it gives you ammo. Kind of weird, I know. Question: I'm next to one Question. of these towers, but I'm not getting any ammo. Oh, and it's you're a probably friendly full, base. Then. Why ain't I getting any ammo? You're probably full on ammo then. No, empty on ammo. Empty on ammo? You should be getting ammo, I don't know the reason why you shouldn't be. So, it has to have the ammo, or vehicle ammo dispenser symbol on it. If that does not exist on this tower, then it's not an actual ammo dispensing tower. Yeah. So if you can see at the top of the tower, it should have these three little ammo pack symbol, this three little bullet symbol, that's your ammo tower. That's how you can tell it's an ammo tower. Also, you can see it on the map, like your vehicle terminal. So, just be aware of that, you can see them on the map. If you open your map, you can see them. As a little, um, it's, it's a weird image. It's like a, vit, a tank with like ammo behind it. I don't know if you can, I'd probably cover in it. Also, if you land any kind of vehicle on top of them, you immediately explode. Fun fact. So don't do that. <laughs> so don't or maybe do that. Do that. Yeah, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Someone might know that by experience. They might, theoretically. So that's it, guys. Uh, I'm just going to invite you to all press your U keys one more time. We're going to be heading over to the VR training. So hit those U keys. Let that countdown, you know, countdown. And uh, I'll explain how to get VR training if anyone's new to that. So once you're at the map and you having you don't know how to get to VR training, um, you've seen the map at the top. You should see the uh, 
the content name. Right now it should say SME at the top. So if you click the name, um, a list should drop down. Um, at the bottom of that list, you should say World Map. If you click World Map, it should take you to another area. Um, over to your left, it should have War Zones, and then underneath there, it should have Safe Zones. Underneath the safe, safe Zones, it should have VR Training. You'll just click VR Training, and then Warp. Let me know if you're having any trouble. Let me know if you're having any trouble getting to VR Training. <laughs> 